Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Miguel Fuentes, and today is Sunday. You know what that means? Today is sermon time. So, um, <clears throat> today we're going to take a look at First John chapter four, and then next week is going to be our last week of this series, and uh, I'm I'm very, very excited. Um, so, uh, before we start, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord. God, I just thank you that you gave us a time to worship you, Lord, because you are an awesome God, Lord. You are a mighty God. God, we, we, we ask that you give us the fear of the Lord so that we can not only to, you know, respect you, O Lord, but also to show the people truth of the word of God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and, and Lord, we ask that you give us uh, your love towards others, Lord, and, and to uh, change people's lives, Lord, by the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Alright, so let's review of last week's sermon. So we talked about <clears throat> uh, the, the command to love. And, and in First John, there's a lot of love. The, the word love in First John, there's a lot of it, you know. And so, number one is command to love. We are his children. Number two, he who is righteous. Um, talked about, you know, the difference between sin and the children of God. Number three, talks about do not marvel if the world hates you. And we talked about how Jesus says that if you love him, if you are seeking after him and if, if you're walking with him, you will be persecuted and you will be hated by the world. And before, the outworking of love, you know, keeping his commandments. And we talked about the first part uh, about the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Uh, you know, always abide in the Lord, keeping his commandments. Um, yeah. So. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> now, I'm going to be using the parallel, uh, the, uh, the parallel Bible, King James, and the uh, modern English version today. And I may read it uh, in the modern and then the King James, if the Lord allows. Yeah, it's a short, short chapter, but... Let's read from the modern English version, and then we will read from the King James. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are of uh, they are of uh, from God. Many, uh, because many false prophets has gone out into the world. This is how you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Uh, not of God. Oh, sorry. It is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Okay. Which you have heard is coming and is already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are, they are of the world, and therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. <clears throat> We are of God, and whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not of God does not listen to us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and, and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to, to us that God sent His only begotten Son 
into the world that we may live through him. And this is love. So in this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and his, and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfect in us. We know that we live in him and he in us, in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he is in, in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has, has for us. God is love. Whoever loves... Sorry, whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. In this way, <coughs> God loves is perfect in us, so that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because, of, because as he is, so are we in this world. In this way, God's Love is perfect in... Oh, sorry, I just read it. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears is not perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For well, whoever does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? We have this commandment from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Wow, powerful stuff. Alright, let's read it from the King James. Those of you who are you know, we love the King James. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the, in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth that as not that Jesus Christ is is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, <clears throat> whereof ye have heard that it, it should come, and even now already is in the is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they, they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Where uh, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another for for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth and not and uh, not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son 
into the world that we may live through him. Wherein is love? Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the uh, portion for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfect in us. Hereby know that sorry, hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do and do testify that the Father sent him sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, dwell, uh, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we, <clears throat> and we have known and believed the, the love that God hath to us. God is love. And, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Here, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because, as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear has, has tormented Torment, he that feareth is not made made perfect in love. We love God because he loved us, so he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he um, has seen, how can he love God? Whom he has not seen. And this commandment have we from him. That he who loveth God. Love his brother also. Now that's the end of chapter 4. So there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of jam packed stuff in this. Um, so we continue on with this. Uh, number 1. Test every spirit. This is, this is really really important. In the body of Christ. Is that. Um, don't believe what every man says. Um, and in this portion of scripture, it talks about spirits. And we see, um, you know, in, uh, Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read to you this. Ephesians chapter 6. Um, verse 12. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual forces of evil in a in the heavenly places. And then we see this again in Second um, uh, Corinthians chapter ten. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Period. There you go. So, understand this, is that not only that we are facing uh you know demonic beings but but I do believe that we ought to have discernment we ought to have discernment uh oftentimes many don't discern when their pastor is preaching in a pulpit oftentimes nobody is discerning about that prophet that is in the pulpit and and, and that leads to a dangerous uh road 
to not only to be deceived, but accepting false teachings uh, that does not line up with scripture. And so for me, I got to be careful of what I'm saying. Because any one word, you know, it, it throws off. And so I encourage you, I encourage y'all, you know, if, if, if you, if you see anything that, well, I, if I say anything wrong, if I, uh, I don't know, but, but, you know, correct me, rebuke me, do something <laughs> just to get my attention because, uh, you know, sometimes God, you know, will point me off some things that I need to work on. Uh, or, you know, God will use a brother or a sister in the Lord to, uh, to correct me on some things, you know, uh, and, and I'm, and I'm all for that, you know, we should be rebuked, we should be exalted, we should, well, uh, exaltation, we should be all, you know, correction, you know, we need that in the body of Christ, and so there will be false prophets on this world. And, and and that we should be absolutely be in the scripture each and every day. You know, I'm almost finished reading through the whole Bible in two months. I'm probably halfway there. And I tell you, you know, I'm starting to have a habit of reading the Word of God on a daily basis because this is this is the this is the lifestyle that I'm choosing. Because I want to please the Lord, not only to um, not only to read the word and to hear the word, but also to be doers of the word in order for us to understand what's going on in this world. You know, I've seen a lot of news lately, uh, like the like the polar vortex. At least twenty people got killed uh, under minus fifty degree weather. That is. Cause that is cold, and it it can easily get frostbite. You can easily get sick from it. You easily can be froze to death of that certain of that certain temperature, um, which is the coldest uh, recording, um, especially in Antarctica. You know, super cold. But anyway, understand that. Uh, you know, Neptune and Uranus, a lot of these planets are extremely cold to the point where you will be like a statue and when you fall in the crust by the pressure and stuff, you'll, you'll be broken like glass, basically. So, uh, that, that's that's cold. Anyway, sorry to off track here, but uh, there is a GIF called the discerning the discerning of spirits and I think I talk about it in first Corinthians first Corinthians chapter I think chapter blah, blah, chapter 12 okay let's see let's see let's see okay first Corinthians Verse 10. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, uh, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. Okay? So that, that's part of what I call the, the spiritual gift package, basically. Uh, now you can have more than one, uh, you know, spiritual gifts, and I may do a study on uh, all the gifts that the Lord has given us uh, through the Scriptures. Uh, anyway, number two, when you are in love with God, you will know Him. See, understand that. Love has been repeated so many times in this in this uh, in this chapter. Love, love, love. Now I'm not a hippie. Let's just say you know I love every well. Of course we gotta love everyone, but 
Go ahead and stand at uh, in verse 20, actually in verse 19, we love, excuse me, we love him because he loved, so he first loved us first, anyway, yeah, and that, and, and that's the reason why God the Father sent his son to die on the cross so that we can be set free. You know, it's not, uh, you know, the gospel is so simple to the point where a five-year-old can understand this. Is that Jesus Christ came to set us free and to also to be empowered to walk in his, in his footsteps, basically. Um, and so, we ought to fall in love with God, you know, when we worship the Lord, when we reading the word when he, when we pray we ask the lord to give us his love so that we can love him back and so we got to thank him for what he has done on the cross because that is a powerful testimony everyone powerful testimony is where that uh, so is where you are delivered from drugs from depression from pornography and that you fell in love so much that now you, you not now you belong to the Lord, and 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 that the enemy is there to give us temptations, and that and and our job is to fast and pray, uh, fast and pray to get, to weaken the flesh so that you won't give in to these temptations. Um, and, and also, you know, you know, keep your mind on, on Christ. Uh, so many times in scripture, you know, focus on Christ. Keep your mindset in, in the obedience of Christ. Number three, God is love. Okay. God loves you to the point where you don't want this sin no more and being transformed because of this love because of his love. Like like I said, we love God because he first loved us. And and, and that's powerful. That is very, very powerful because you gotta understand, you know, if if you truly Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. You gotta stop sinning. Now, there, there, there's points where we don't realize that we sin, and yet the Holy Spirit convict us, and that we repent. You know, nobody here is perfect. Understand this. Uh, <clears throat> but, understand this. You know, there, there will be points where you're gonna be facing trials. Do you love God enough to go through that trial and to be refined into His image? You know, life is ain't easy. Life is not easy. Um, you know, uh, I could read books all day long, and yet without Christ, I am nothing. My own knowledge is in vain. But but when I seek the Lord, when I read the Bible, when I, you know, read um. You know, quantum mechanics. When I read um, astronomy, oh not not astronomy, yeah astronomy. When I read books on uh, psychology and philosophy and biology and all these things, I I remind myself that God created all these subjects way before man ever discovered it, and so I praise God. For creating life on earth. I praise God for giving me. His breath. His air. So that I can breathe. Okay. So God loves us to the point where he wants us to be. Everyone should be evangelists. You know. Uh, or, or you know. I think the scripture that talked about the gift of evangelism. Having. That in your life will bless you, because you got you're gonna have the heart for the loss, and that we need to reach for the loss in these end times. 
we're living in times right now. Um, so I praise God for that. Uh, number four, obedience by faith. Now, this is really, really important. Uh, obedience is what we do if we love someone. Let me give you two examples. Let's say your dad wants you to take out the trash. Are you do you love your dad enough to go do what your dad says? Or let's say your wife, if you're married. Your wife says, cut the grass. Do you love your do you love your wife enough to be obedient to cut to, to, to mow the lawn? Okay? Same thing with our walk with the Lord. Do we love God enough to be obedient to Him? Because obeying God is not easy. You, you know, you got to fast and pray a lot. You know, if, if God wants you to move to Canada, are you going to do it? Or if God wants you to be at a different job, are you? do you love God enough to do it? Or, or, or if God called you to go to be a missionary in North Korea, do you love God enough to do it? See, you gotta understand that you know the uh, God gave us grace to obey Him, and uh, it takes faith to obey God. That's why that's why I say obedience by faith. Faith pleases God. You know. Uh, remember uh, in Book of Numbers, we see that the, the Israelites were complaining a lot uh, to the point where Moses sinned against God because God says to uh, speak to the rock instead of tapping it with his rod. He, and he, he never went to the promised land because of it. Um... Yeah, so you know, you got you got to take it by faith, and not by sight. You got no, I'm sorry, you can't. You no, know, don't 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 um um uh, live by faith and not by sight. Uh, in in the Book of Romans, um, you know, if if God leads you to get a new job, go ahead and obey. Have faith that the Lord will give you a new job. Maybe maybe the Lord wants you to inc increase your income to you know to go on local mission trips. I don't know. Um, for example, um, <clears throat> let me give you another example. If your mom says that you know, if your mom says clean your room, do you love your mom enough? To clean your room, you know. Um, yeah. So I close with this: um, stop playing with God. God doesn't play around. God will not be mocked because God knows your heart. You know, are you really, truly? Um, what's called? Uh, that reminds me. Uh, last night I was uh, taking the seminary online. Uh, I'm, I'm right now. I'm taking theology too, uh, which is pretty interesting, by the way. <laughs> and uh, and and there's a lesson called testing the spirits. And man, oh man, it was it, it was incredible. Um, and in in this you know video slides and stuff, I I learned that not only that you got to test everyone, you know. Everyone, you know, having discernment towards everyone, but also have discernment towards yourself. You know, the Bible says, examine yourself. Are we examining ourselves and, and testing that? Are, are we acknowledging that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? You know, examining ourselves in the faith, where we at, you know, and, and, and also, you know, having discernment uh, towards 
towards uh towards every believer and, and what their motives are and anyway again off track again so um i hope that you guys are enjoying this sermon series i may do a playlist no no well I, mean, I may add this to the sermon and teachings playlist uh because of it so uh yeah so i hope that you enjoy this uh message and uh yeah so uh, having a rough time rough time at work so keep me your prayers on that um I don't know, I may do, I may search for another job nearby, but not really sure. I'm, I'm just not really sure. But, um, you know, I'm praying that the Lord will make a way to either, you know, start like a side business or something that will help me to um, find a different career path rather than being like a landscaper for the rest of my life. Uh, I, I just know that God has a plan for me. So, yeah, just give me a prayer on that. Uh, next week will be our last week of this sermon series. Um, and I may do, like, I don't know, another sermon series in the, in the future, um, like Nehemiah. I was thinking about doing Ezra, but not, not for sure. I may do, I, I, I got so many things in my mind, but Lord willing, you know, I may do another sermon series later in a in a future of this year. Um oh yeah, so that's all I got for today folks. I hope that you are uh blessed for this message. I hope that you learn, you know, from first John as myself. Uh, I really enjoy it. So yeah, so may God bless you and keep you. I'll see you again later.